Here is Synthax, a time traveler from the year 2500. For this journey, I've chosen to tell you the remarkable story of Heineken, a brewery that began humbly in 1864 and which now spans the globe, with a legacy enduring through time and space. I arrived in Amsterdam in the middle of the 19th century, where I first met the industrious Gerard Adrian Heineken. His story was a testament to the power of resilience, audacity, and a solid pint of beer. Gerard, a man of only 22 years, was not born into a brewing family, yet he was determined to create a product that would not just bring enjoyment to people's lives, but would also help build communities and bridge cultures. It was a massive undertaking, considering the numerous challenges faced by the industry in that era. Technological limitations, erratic supply chains, a lack of consistent quality in the beers being brewed. His dream was nearly derailed when his family was opposed to his business ambition, considering brewing an unrefined profession. Despite this, Gerard persisted, bought the De Hoiberg Brewery, and began his journey, producing a Bavarian-style lager that was a departure from the popular ales of the day. It was risky, but Gerard believed in innovation and novelty. He was one of the pioneers of brewing science, a field that he believed would create more consistent and high-quality beer. Gerard's faith in his unique beer led him to focus not only on producing the beverage but also ensuring its widespread availability. During the early days, transportation and storage of beer were challenging due to the lack of proper refrigeration and limited modes of transport. Undeterred, Gerard embarked on a journey to revolutionize the beer transportation system. He introduced refrigerated rail cars and barges to carry his beer, a novelty that made Heineken available in every corner of the Netherlands. His vision did not stop there, he wanted Heineken to be a beer for everyone, everywhere. He revolutionized the distribution model, focusing on exports and daring to send his beer overseas, where most other breweries feared to venture. The Heineken brewery started facing another major challenge in the 1870s, the competition. The Dutch market was becoming saturated with an array of different beers. Many breweries were trying to undercut each other, leading to a market-wide decrease in the price of beer. Gerard, however, decided to stay his course, and instead of lowering prices, he chose to differentiate Heineken by focusing on the quality of the beer. He decided to hire Dr. Elian, a student of Louis Pasteur, to develop a unique Heineken yeast, now known as Heineken's A yeast. This yeast was crucial for the consistency and quality of Heineken beer and has been used ever since. Dr. Elian's scientific approach to brewing helped the brewery maintain the quality and taste of their lager leading to a surge in popularity among the beer-drinking public. This decision paid off when, in 1889, Heineken won the Diplôme de Grand Prix at the Exposition Universelle in Paris, a testament to the superior quality of its beer. This was a major turning point for Heineken, leading to an increased international presence and prestige. The company's strategy to focus on quality over pricing proved successful, and Heineken began to emerge as a major player in the international beer market. Gerard Adrian Heineken passed away in 1893, leaving behind an enduring legacy. His son, Henry Pierre Heineken, took over the brewery. Henry Pierre was a visionary in his own right, introducing the concept of beer advertising to the Dutch market. He understood the power of branding, transforming Heineken from a simple beer into a household name. The early 1900s were a challenging time for the beer industry. The First World War disrupted the supply chains, and many breweries were forced to shut down operations. Heineken, however, was resilient. Henri Pierre, understanding the gravity of the situation, opted to source raw materials locally. Despite the odds, Heineken continued brewing, even during the war. After the war, Henri Pierre focused on expanding the distribution network. Heineken beer was exported to more than 50 countries by the 1930s. The company went public in 1939, further solidifying its position in the global market. This move attracted significant investments, allowing the company to weather the storm of the Second World War. Freddie Heineken, grandson of Gerard Adrian, took over in 1941, right in the middle of the Second World War. Freddie had a larger-than-life persona, and his marketing acumen was instrumental in making Heineken a global brand. He was passionate about the beer and was determined to make it available to everyone around the globe. After the war, Freddie saw an opportunity for Heineken to conquer the American market, which was dominated by lighter beers. Heineken's rich lager was different from what American consumers were used to, but Freddie saw this as a strength rather than a weakness. 
he believed that the quality and unique taste of Heineken would eventually win over American beer drinkers. Freddy spearheaded the launch of Heineken in the U.S. market in 1946, making it one of the first imported beers to be widely distributed in America. The campaign was a success, with Heineken quickly becoming a preferred beer among American consumers, effectively paving the way for other imported beers. Heineken's rise in the U.S. market was a testament to Freddy's foresight. But his innovation did not stop at distribution. Freddy was an advocate for design and believed that a well-crafted bottle was just as important as the beer it contained. In 1963, he introduced the Smiling E logo, modernizing the brand and making it more recognizable. The 1970s was a period of rapid growth and expansion for Heineken. Freddy embarked on a series of acquisitions, starting with the purchase of Amstel Brewery in 1968. This acquisition was a strategic move that allowed Heineken to increase production and meet the growing demand for its beer. The introduction of Heineken draft beer in 1971, served from kegs instead of bottles, was another breakthrough. This innovative product offered a fresh and unique beer drinking experience and was well received, further cementing Heineken's place in the global beer market. In 1975, Heineken made its first venture into Asia by setting up a brewery in Singapore. This move was a part of Freddy's global expansion plan, making Heineken a truly global beer brand. The brewery helped Heineken cater to the growing demand for its beer in the Asian market. In the 1980s, Heineken faced a new challenge, a growing demand for light beers. Recognizing this trend, Heineken launched Heineken Light in 1985. The launch was a success, and Heineken Light became a popular choice among consumers seeking a lower calorie option. The passing of Freddie Heineken in 2002 marked the end of an era. Under his leadership, Heineken had become a global brand. However, the new generation of Heinekens was ready to take the reins. Charlene de Carvalho Heineken, Freddie's daughter, assumed control of the company and continued her father's legacy of innovation and expansion. In 2005, Heineken made a significant move into the premium beer market with the introduction of Heineken Premium Light. This lighter, smoother variant was well received by consumers and strengthened Heineken's position in the premium segment. Heineken continued its global expansion with the acquisition of Scottish and Newcastle's operations in 2008. This gave Heineken access to several popular beer brands and further increased its global market share. Sustainability became a focus for Heineken in the new millennium. The company launched its Brewing a Better World program in 2010, aiming to reduce water usage, carbon emissions, and waste from its breweries. It was a bold move, showing Heineken's commitment to not just brewing excellent beer, but also contributing positively to the environment. This initiative positioned Heineken as a responsible corporate citizen, devoted to sustainable business practices. The year 2013 was marked by another significant acquisition when Heineken took over Asia-Pacific breweries. This strategic move further strengthened Heineken's presence in the fast-growing Asian market, solidifying its position as one of the world's leading beer producers. Heineken also leveraged digital transformation to its advantage. Recognizing the power of technology, Heineken launched a global website and mobile application in 2015. These platforms allowed consumers to interact with the brand, learn more about the beer, and discover the rich history behind Heineken. Heineken has always been known for its innovative marketing campaigns, and the year 2016 was no exception. The When You Drive, Never Drink campaign, featuring legendary Formula One driver Sir Jackie Stewart, was a powerful message promoting responsible drinking, reinforcing Heineken's commitment to societal well-being. In the same year, Heineken launched the non-alcoholic beer, Heineken 0.0. Recognizing the growing trend of health-conscious consumers and mindful drinking, Heineken 0.0 offered a great-tasting beer with no alcohol, once again displaying the company's innovative spirit. Heineken's sustainability efforts bore fruit in 2018 when the company reported that 29% of its global electricity usage came from renewable sources. The company also reported water efficiency improvements in most of its breweries. This commitment to sustainability was recognized globally, strengthening Heineken's position as an environmentally conscious company. Despite the challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, Heineken displayed resilience. The company focused on maintaining the health and safety of its employees while ensuring business continuity. While sales were impacted due to global lockdowns, Heineken's robust business model allowed it to weather the storm. 
Recognizing the need for change after the pandemic, Heineken launched a new hard seltzer brand, Pure Piranha, in 2021. This move into the rapidly growing hard seltzer market showed Heineken's ability to adapt and innovate in response to changing consumer preferences. In the same year, Heineken announced that it had achieved its target of sourcing 70% of its agricultural raw materials in Africa sustainably, further showcasing its commitment to responsible and sustainable business practices. Heineken continued its tradition of memorable marketing campaigns with the Cheers to All campaign in 2021, breaking stereotypes by celebrating all people, regardless of gender, who enjoy a beer. Until we meet again, farewell.